Did you know House of the Dragon wasn't even the first Game of Thrones spin-off project? Yeah. We were meant to have a different spin-off that would have been more interesting than House of the Dragon, and that spin-off was Blood Moon. Of course, every Game of Thrones fan wanted a prequel to make us forget the poor finale of the final season. That was what Blood Moon was about, and we have its exciting story for you. So what's the story behind this $35 million Game of Thrones spin-off that we never saw? The prequel that never was. In 2018, HBO announced some exciting news about a brand new series set in the Game of Thrones universe called Blood Moon. This wasn't just any spinoff. We're talking about a deep dive, 8,000 years back into Westeros' history, a period known as the Age of Heroes. Pretty cool, right? They brought Jane Goldman, the genius behind Stardust and Kick-Ass, to run the show. The series promised to be epic, starring Naomi Watts alongside Jamie Campbell Bauer. Other exceptional talents like Josh Whitehouse, Denise Gao, and Naomi Aki were also involved. The cast and crew even filmed a pilot episode, with this single episode costing a whopping 30 to $35 million. But despite all the hype and investment put into the spinoff, we never saw it. HBO pulled the plug in late 2019, and just like that, Blood Moon was no more. Why did HBO cancel Blood Moon, the Game of Thrones spinoff that had everyone buzzing? Casey Bloys, HBO's big boss for content creation, shed some light on the situation. He mentioned nothing was wrong with the Blood Moon pilot, but it just didn't hit the right notes for them. Diving into a story set 8,000 years before the Game of Thrones, we know and love was a bold move. It was an adventure with little to go on, not many backstories or details laid out. And while the idea had a cool factor, HBO ultimately decided it wasn't the path they wanted to take. In addition, Robert Greenblatt, who was in charge at HBO's parent company, Warner Media, shared his two cents. He said the pilot episode was alright and had great visuals but it didn't capture the magic like the original series did. It was missing that special energy that made Game of Thrones. Well, Game of Thrones. In Robert's words, it didn't have that depth and richness that the original series pilot did. HBO had a pretty ambitious plan for expanding the Game of Thrones universe. They didn't just want to churn out another story about battles for power and the throne. They planned to shake things up and leave everyone in awe. That's why they initially got excited about The Long Night, which promised a whole new adventure. But here's what went wrong with Blood Moon. It was treading in largely uncharted waters. George R.R. R. Martin, the mastermind behind the Game of Thrones world, hadn't mentioned much about this ancient era. As a result, Jane Goldman, who was in charge, had creative freedom. She could dream up the storyline, the big moments, and all the twists and turns. Having that much creative space is a dream come true, and in many ways, it is. In fact, Francesca Orsi, one of HBO's drama chiefs, seemed to think so too. But crafting something from almost scratch, especially in a world as beloved and complex as Game of Thrones, came with its own set of challenges. On the flip side, there's a catch to not having a hefty stack of George R. R. Martin's novels to use as a blueprint. Remember the final season of Game of Thrones and how it left some fans scratching their heads? That's what happens when the show outpaces the books. Even though no one came out and said it, it seemed everyone involved knew deep down that what really made Game of Thrones epic was Martin's rich and detailed world. However, Game of Thrones fans are left wondering exactly what the spin-off story would have been. All we have left are bits and pieces, some guesses, a few sneak peek photos from the set of Blood Moon, and hints about the stories it might have told. Instead of getting this epic new story, fans were left to imagine what could have been. But do not worry. We have the story ready for you, our beloved. What would have been? Set thousands of years before the dragons and events we witnessed in Game of Thrones, Blood Moon was meant to take us to a time called the Age of Heroes. This show was supposed to reveal how the spooky White Walkers came to be, and the story of the first Long Night, a scary time that almost came back to haunt everyone in Game of Thrones.
Unfortunately, turning a few sentences from George R.R. R. Martin about this ancient era into a whole series seemed a massive challenge. Martin himself was a bit worried about making up so much stuff to fill in the blanks, even though they managed to finish writing the first episode and started making the show. The first episode was rumored to be about a massive wedding between two prominent North and South houses. It was supposed to tell tales about the first folks who wandered Wester Rose, the enigmatic children of the forest and the eerie beginnings of the White Walkers. Judging from the sneak peek in the teaser trailer, the Children of the Forest was a central topic in Blood Moon. These Children of the Forest are known as the original magical beings of Wester Rose, way before humans showed up. These children are a magical race that's been around for ages, and now they're about to steal the spotlight. The Children of the Forest are a big deal in the Game of Thrones world, even if we didn't see them much. Remember Jon Snow and his handy dragon glass for taking out White Walkers? Yep, that was a gift from the children. They were the ones who introduced the people to the old gods and showed how to warg. That cool trick where you jump into the mind of an animal, something Bran Stark got pretty good at. Despite their low-key presence, the children's fingerprints are all over the Game of Thrones universe. They've got history with the First Men and even the scary White Walkers. After a long feud with the First Men, they called a truce and signed a peace deal on the Isle of Faces. A snippet from the teaser has one of the children hinting at their deep-rooted history, saying their story started long before humans showed up. This line alone sets up a show ready to explore the old, unresolved tensions between these magical beings and the rest of Westeros, one we all came to love in the Game of Thrones series. Now, Blood Moon was supposed to spill the tea on where these icy villains actually came from. And guess what? The story we thought we knew from Game of Thrones might have been missing. Remember that big reveal in Season 6 about how the White Walkers were made? George R.R. R. Martin, the mastermind behind it all, hinted he had a few more tricks up his sleeve for this backstory, especially now that he's calling more of the shots alongside Jane Goldman. And for all lovers of House Stark of Winterfell, Blood Moon would be like hitting the jackpot. Since the Starks are one of Westeros' OG families, we could have seen some details about their legendary past. We could have met prominent people like Eddard Stark and Brandon the Builder in Blood Moon. This guy wasn't just any builder. He was the legend who whipped up Winterfell and the Wall, making him a big deal in the history books of Westeros. Also, Blood Moon could have stirred the pot by diving into the tale of someone a bit more edgy, like the Night King. We're not talking about that icy villain Night King who killed Daenerys Targaryen's dragon and turned it into his. This is a totally different character, believe it or not. The Night King was originally a Stark who ended up being the 13th boss of the Night's Watch. But here's the juicy part. He fell head over heels for a White Walker lady. Yeah, talk about complicated love stories. Blood Moon was set to be this epic throwback to Wester Rose's early days, like flipping through an old family album, but with way more intriguing secrets we were never told. And when we were all set to dive deep, the whole project was shelved in silence. It was a big deal that just fizzled out, leaving everyone hanging. But it's not all bad news. We still have House of the Dragon. Imagine stepping back in time, not too far, just about 200 years before the epic tales of Game of Thrones. This is where House of the Dragon takes us, diving into the heart of George R.R. R. Martin's novel Fire and Blood. But how did fans receive the news? When Game of Thrones fans worldwide heard about Blood Moon's cancellation, everyone shared their opinions and thoughts about the cancellation. One hardcore fan shared a post on Reddit. That last season of Game of Thrones, in my opinion, ruined any prequel ideas. I say they should start on a sequel to wash away the memory of that heaping pile of trash known as Season 8 and then go back to the prequels. Many fans of Game of Thrones were buzzing with different opinions. Some think the creators were trying to keep a prequel under wraps, while others voiced out loud, hoping for more seasons instead of a prequel. Some fans, on the other hand, felt relieved that the prequel had been cancelled. They say it's a blessing in disguise, because it means newcomers to the Game of Thrones world won't have their experience spoiled. 
they're pretty passionate, saying, Imagine the new viewer who didn't watch Game of Thrones and decides to invest time in watching the prequel show, then reads into or watches Game of Thrones and is absolutely saddened by the outcome. Emilia Clarke, the actress who played Daenerys Targaryen in Game of Thrones, also shared her thoughts on all the talk about the prequel. Even though she's just as puzzled as we are about why it got cancelled, she hinted that the prequel might not be off the table forever. The 37-year-old actress has seen a lot in the world of TV and movies. She said that she wasn't exactly sure what happened, but also noted that it isn't easy to get movies like that made without a blueprint. She said further that Blood Moon might be brought back later, but for them to cancel the prequel, it meant it wasn't the right time for the whole world to see it. In all, Blood Moon is a reminder that making TV shows can be unpredictable. Sometimes, even the most exciting projects can crumble before they get off the ground. But for those who love diving into stories of heroes, villains, and magic, the idea of Blood Moon is still out there as a missed opportunity and a story never told. Do you think Blood Moon would hit the cinema someday? Let us know your thoughts in the comments sections below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more exciting content.